Jane Lo on site at the uh, Supercomputing Asia 2023 here in Singapore at the Singapore Expo, which is quite close to uh, the uh, Changi Airport here in Singapore. And uh, with me today, I'm very pleased and very privileged to have Mark Stiegels, who is the Executive Director with Porsi Supercomputing Centre in Perth, and also Aditi Subramanya, who is the uh, Marketing Specialist with Porsi uh, Supercomputing Centre in Perth, and from Australia, all the way from Australia. So, you know, very pleased and very privileged that you can spare the time with us today to talk about the latest developments in energy efficiency programs at Posi Supercomputing Centre, as well as talent development uh, programs as well at the centre. So thank you so much for your time today. Thanks, Jane. Thanks, Thanks Jane. Nice. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. It's great to be back in Singapore. After, after a few years, it's been, uh, I think, four years since four we years. were back That's in... Four years. That's right. Um, and I had the, uh, um, the honour of... Early on, in, early on in my role at Pawsey of, of meeting you and, uh, and doing a podcast in 2019 and, uh, and a lot's happened in the last four years. Yeah, so yeah, so it has been four years, 2019, I can't believe it. So over the last three years, obviously, there was no physical forum because of the COVID and the pandemic, but a lot has happened. So before we go into the topics of energy efficiency programs and talent development, can you just give us a brief sort of run through of all the things, exciting things that has happened in the last four years. Well, let's not let's not talk about the COVID pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> Although what we will do, we're here we're here talking about supercomputing, and many people um, I think now appreciate the power of supercomputing. So the the accelerated response to the COVID vaccine development was helped by supercomputers. So all around the world, supercomputing centres yes. really did play a yeah. part in uh, um, using. You know, computing power to uh, to respond to that pandemic not just modeling the response to the spread of the pandemic but developing developing the vaccines and so on so um, but we've been very busy at pausey over the last uh, four years we um, we've installed uh, a new supercomputer um, a fantastic new system uh, one of the most energy efficient supercomputers oh, wow. in the world um, and it is named Satonix. And so when I last met with you, um, we had a kangaroo That's on, right, our, on, our, yes. on our table, but this, this time we've actually got a quokka. It has so evolved from a kangaroo. That's right, it has <laughs> evolved. In the same family, um, but a smaller member of the family. Um, uh, the quokka's scientific name is Satonix. And that's why we've named our supercomputer. Right, okay. Um, it also has wonderful uh, Indigenous Australian artwork on its system. So if you look up, um, if any of your viewers look up on the, uh, on the website pictures of our system, it has wonderful, um, wonderful artwork that was recognised as, uh, as the best uh, artwork on a supercomputer um, by the HPC wire folks. Probably so the only one that oh, is. No, no, many no. do, many oh, do. Many do. Okay. So we're very proud of that because it also reflects uh, culture and history and tradition and things that are very important. Any so we've continued to, uh, um, to, I think, improve the way we operate at Pawsey. We run as one of two national centres in Australia, and so there's a lot of national collaboration and, and partnerships in, in, in areas. Um, and importantly, we provide essential support for one of the world's biggest science projects, is the Square Kilometre Array. Oh, of course, yes, yes, yes so, right. So when, when we last met, that project was still, the countries that are working together were still negotiating that um, that partnership, but they formally announced the international mm. agency. I actually had an interview yeah. with uh, Dr. Sarah Pierce, I believe. Oh, it was she's, last year. she's wonderful. She was a keynote speaker at this conference last uh, last of year. Of course. Um, and uh, and is, a, is a fantastic colleague. So she's the director of the SKA Low, so one of the major telescopes that are to be built in Western Australia. There's another one to be built in South Africa, yes. and it's run as a global project. I think there are 14 countries involved. But Pawsey will host the supercomputing and data storage environment to support the operations of what will be an exascale, exa, exa class quality um, project. And that's, uh, that project reached a construction milestone at the end of last year. And so they're starting to construct the telescopes in Western Australia this year. And it will um, be a project that will work over a number of years. So the, the telescope will be sending lots of data to the supercomputing Massive, centre? And so yeah. much data that we can't process it at the moment. So we've got to build the systems to I be see. able to deal with, right, right. with, with um, exascale data. So it really is um, okay. an incredibly ambitious project and uh, working across uh, a number of countries. So I think Singapore is, uh, is, uh, is positioned to be one of those hubs that uh, lots of data may flow through um, oh, right, okay. for um, supporting science all around the world. 
Right, okay. I, I don't think that we have the time to go over the security <laughs> aspects of you know, how we ring fence some of this data because obviously it's coming from different countries and yeah. there is, I guess, some sensitivity towards you know, what kind of data can be shared or not. But um, maybe in That's the a topic of another, yeah, another, yeah, another one. Day. I know that's your special interest. <laughs> that's um, right, yeah. And it is, uh, it is an, uh, an international science project, um, but it will take into account in moving masses of data um, security and um, you know, sovereign protections for um, for hosting data. Um, as a national facility, Pawsey is uh, considered you know critical, essential national infrastructure, and we take um, very seriously our obligations around uh, around security. It's a it's a matter that's uh, in an increasingly digitally connected right. world that we've operated through through the pandemic. I think we're also now much more aware and, and vigilant around matters to do with security. So. A topic for another yeah, day. Yeah, exactly, a topic for another day. When you talk about critical infrastructure, I go, wow, okay, another sort of area to dive into, actually, Indeed. from a security point of view. Indeed. Okay, so talking about energy efficiency, right? Um, I was, uh, your presentation, your keynote presentation yesterday, you talk about how 8% of the energy that's been used today has been taken up, it's been taken up by IT-related sort of services. Mm. And if we keep on that rate of uh, the utilization, we will be looking at uh, by 2049 that all the energy that's generated will be allocated to primarily an IT services. And of course, supercomputing computers um, use a lot of energy, not just for running all these simulations, but also for cooling. Yes. So you have done a lot as well in terms of energy efficiency to improve the um, utilization of energy. So tell us about that, that policy. Yeah. Well, it is, um, it is, uh, it was a provocative thing to say that uh, if you project the current use of energy around IT, that uh, all the energy in the world by the middle of this century would be used for <laughs> IT. Um, so it was uh, intended to remind our audience that we, we are part of the problem that contributes to, uh, um, to you know, climate change and global warming. Uh, but we're also part of the solution. Um, we we run um, uh, support science at at, a, at a, an important scale that helps to model and um, develop the a better understanding of the climate and develop tools and technologies to to respond. Um, but as businesses, as enterprises, we are increasingly developing better methods for optimizing the performance of our compute and design of our structures and systems, um, the management of water, which is a precious resource. Um, and we've piloted a number of those um, innovations at, uh, at Pawsey. And it's, a, it's a, a, a genuine source of interest and discussion around this conference this year, I, I think um, something that, uh, that we're all involved with. Um, we're also focused on the people side of this. So in order to, uh, we build better systems and we, we try to source better energy, clean, um, renewable energy, but we work with our user community and our staff to um, optimise their use. So it is something that um, Aditi's here as a co-chair of the uh, diversity and inclusion stream at the conference and very focused on skills and development of, um, of people because there's, there are other statistics, and I don't have the exact number at, 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 at hand, but the growth of people working in the IT mm -hmm. industry with IT skills, with security That's skills, right, yeah. is in, tremendous. So we need to broaden the, the number of people that work in our yep. industry and uh, not have uh, it dominated by uh, middle-aged white men. <laughs> um, <laughs> we need to be much more inclusive and, and really... In well, yeah, surrounded by two women. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. I've been speaking a lot too, so I don't know if my colleague wants to reflect on uh, Yes, on yeah. So t t talk to us about talent development programs at Posse. I think um, something that we're really trying to focus on at Posse is diversity um, and kind of show off the 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 um, diverse thought that you have with that. Um, like Mark said that, you know, if you have a lot of people coming together from different walks of life, mm -hmm. um, you get you get cool thought and different ways of doing things. So when, when we look at energy, for example, and we want to work with our researchers to optimize our code, um, our various specialists from 
very different walks of life. I think we have about um, 60 staff from 14 different countries around the world. And that encourages oh, okay. really cool ideas, right. different ways, different approaches and ways of doing things at the centre um, and different ways of working with researchers as well. So um, we really try and encourage that thought that if, if you have diverse um, people, from different walks of life, genders, neurodiversity. It comes with so many advantages as well as a happy place to work. Mm -hmm. um, if, if, if you're included and you're heard and you're given a voice, um, your output is always going to be better. Um, yeah, of course, so yeah. You're yeah, more motivated, aren't you? You have yeah. more motivated, right. you have a good bus business advantage, but as a person as well, it's it's very nice. Um, well, it's a nice thing in the, to get out in the morning, you know, and go to a workplace that is, you know, um, uh, where, where people listen to you and take your feedback seriously, right? Fantastic. We, we, there are times where we understand that we're supporting projects that really do save lives. There's, there's work that we do in, in supercomputing research centres that support very advanced monitoring and predictive analysis of people in critical care in hospitals. And there's a case study on our website that highlights that we've developed with researchers a, an algorithm that can help predict when a traumatically brain injured patients, so if you've been in a, in a car accident and you're being monitored and you're brain pressure changes that it can predict when it's going to happen 20 minutes in advance and then help help save lives oh, wow. so that that that's a that's that's a data story that's an understanding clinical health um, it's advanced computing working with real-time data analysis um, but for a, a really human result and that sort of um, project inspires us so we um, we are doing amazing things um, in, in centres like Pawsey that are you know, studying the, the universe or helping to look at climate, um, yes, are all sorts of things, but mm -hmm. e right down to a human scale, we can make a difference. And that, 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 that motivates us all. Um, we do spend, I think, increasingly time looking at our energy future. So developing um, the science of understanding how to develop better batteries. So being able to model mm -hmm. the um, uh, the molecular properties of certain materials to develop more efficient batteries uh, is something that uh, there's a keynote speaker mm -hmm. at the conference tomorrow morning, a researcher that uh, uses supercomputers to model mm -hmm. that um, that uh, that science. You talk about quantum as well. Quantum I, is something. I um, was part of the, the conference in 2019 had quantum as one of the topics. That's right. There it's are not quantum, going away. There are quantum companies here at the conference this week. There are quantum... Um, startups and uh, it's and getting serious. It is the the software stack. There's a, a partner that we work with, Quantum Brilliance, which is an Australian startup company that now is operating in different countries. Um, it launched another update to its software um, this week, and uh, we've installed uh, one of their accelerators in at Pawsey in a, in, as a room temperature quantum installation, um, as a, a mm -hmm. project that took it out of a research lab and put it into into a facility um, like uh, like ours. Was, uh, was a pioneering piece of work last year. So that, that space is moving very quickly. Still some debate about when it's going to, you know, what are the benefits, but there are concerns, and again, another topic for another conversation <laughs> with you about security, um, because the, the mathematical power of mm -hmm. a quantum computer unleashed um, with you know, with negative intent could be something of concern. So That's right. um, there are many, interesting um, ideas about what the algorithms and the science of could be enabled with a quantum computer working with classical supercomputing so yes. there's some really positive things there but there's clearly in the world of security areas yeah of there's concern. quite a lot of uh, conversations yeah. around um, how to progress some of these uh, R&D in the security quantum security area yes. to something that's more sort of a commercial level that companies can actually use yeah. well I think in my view it's it's where the national centres like ours and NSCC here in Singapore and in the region um, ca can have a contribution here because we're used, used to and we have experts that work with advanced computing and advanced networking mm. infrastructure and codes and user bases um, and so to work with the emergent quantum sector is something that many of the centres that are here this week are, are actively involved in. We, um, we talk about 
actually yesterday there was a great question one of the in one of the tracks about um, quantum this idea about quantum computing still seems quite theoretical we're not putting it into practice yet and they said why what's the point of doing all of this um, and a really good response was that um, it's an emerging technology and once we get to the point where we can use quantum computers in practice um, that's all well and good but we need we need to to be able to use the systems at that point. Um, so we need to be ready now for Absolutely. the system in the future. Um, things that we're doing when we go back to talking about people is a real focus on training and education. Um, for example, Pawsey supports a quantum education hub with um, the universities in Western Australia. Uh, we have a couple of uh, one to two qubit quantum computers that students have access to okay. um, where they can experiment in a quantum computing environment for this exact reason. We're, we're preparing them for technologies of the future um, through our expertise and, and so that real focus on training and education helps, um, helps our researchers prepare for the next generation of technology and I think that's quite important as well. Yeah, so talking about the future, um, the future plan, so aside from training students to prepare them from emerging technologies, um, what other plans are we looking at for policy in the next, uh, well, within this decade? Okay. Well, we, I think within this year, we, we hope to pilot some of the, um, the supporting computing technology to prototype for the square kilometre array. So as that, as that is building the antennas, um, it needs to also develop the computing environment. So we will work closely with the square kilometre array to, uh, uh, to develop that, um, and that will start to take Mm -hmm. um, take its first steps this year. Um, we continue to pilot some uh, novel technologies around energy efficiency and, and aspects of our building infrastructure. Um, we've been running a, a novel geothermal project where we take water from the aquifer beneath Pawsey and recirc As you know, use it, it for cooling and then recycle oh, it. Right. We've been running that for a decade and that's proven to be successful and some of the environmental studies have proven that we've not had any negative environmental impact so that's a very um, we're seeing other commercial providers looking at that technology being adopted. So um, continuing to innovate around energy is something that's important to us. We, um, we're part of now a, a, an exascale community. So while different systems around the world, including those hosted in the National Centre here in Singapore, have different capacity, mm -hmm. we're all essentially part of the same family of computing um, supercomputing and I think there's a growing appetite to collaborate and share expertise and to tackle challenges beyond borders um, and that's something that we would be actively supporting so there's some um, growing formal engagements between centres within this region. Um, I know when, when I was here in 2019 um, our, f our friends in Thailand didn't have a, a national centre. I noticed it's that, a yeah. It's fantastic. They've, they've now launched That's their national right. centre. I, I noticed they have a booth this um, time. They do, but yeah. it's more important than a booth. They've got a supercomputer that's doing great Excellent. science supporting them in Thailand. So Everyone has been busy in the last four years. They have been. <laughs> so that will bring... They'll, they'll, they'll have students working with them, they'll be working with their researchers, and that will provide an uplift in, mm -hmm. in digital skills. And, and very transferable skills to industry and to other sectors. So I think as, as centres, we see ourselves as being these sorts of catalysts and leaders in areas of innovation mm -hmm. and, and skills development and, um, and developing new technologies. So. so for students or for the general public, I know that I asked you this question back in 2019, if they want to know more about policy supercomputers, yeah. what should they do? Oh, I've got a few things that they can do. <laughs> right, okay. Let me give you my plug. We have a whole YouTube channel. We have a whole YouTube channel, <laughs> channel that's been established in the last few years. Okay. Um, I think with the pandemic, we had a bit of a transformation in our digital presence as well. So we, we wanted to have the same exposure that we have and, and give people a lot of really cool resources. Um, so a really great YouTube channel youtube.com slash Pawsey Supercomputing okay. Centre. <laughs> We're on all the socials as usual. Um, but for students especially, we have a really great internship program that is growing. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Third year university students to masters. Uh, at the end, at the summer, um, uh, the Australian summer. Uh, so it, it goes over from about November of each year until about February. It's a 10-week paid program. Uh, but we offer a lot of training 
and education support as well across um, high performance computing, um, all the way down from learning how to use the command line to advanced supercomputing techniques, um, how to accelerate on GPUs, how to be more efficient, how to code in general. Uh, and then we also have a great team of specialists that support our researchers with their work um, and help them to use the com supercomputers the best way that they can. So we have a ton of resources. The best way to stay engaged with Pawsey is to become a Pawsey friend. Uh, we have a, a link on our website where you just fill in a form and you'll, you'll get um, a lot of content from us. We don't spam you, but we good get, content well, when it's relevant. And yeah, you might even get uh, a Pawsey friend. A Dr. Quokka. Dr. Quokka. So we have a lot of ways oh, cool. online All that right. you can engage with us. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, yeah, I'm conscious that we're running uh, short on time. So thank you both very much for your time today. And hopefully we don't uh, wait another four years before the next catch up. No, I hope not. It's been great to see you again. Jane, thank yeah, you very thank much. You. Thank yeah, you so thank much, you. Jane. Thanks.